Hi everyone, the channel Knowledge Academy welcomes you. In this video, we are going to discuss what is meant by aliasing and what are the differences between aliasing and intersymbol interference. Before entering into the video, kindly subscribe my channel Knowledge Academy. Now let us enter into the video. So here, we have discussed a lot of things related to sampling. Sampling is uh, the first step involved in converting an analog signal into digital signal. Due to sampling, an analog signal is converted into discrete signal like this. So here, this is the original analog signal. It is converted into discrete signal like this. Okay. So here, when we compare the shape, the structure of the analog signal with the structure of the uh, discrete signal, the discrete signal resembles the structure of analog signal almost. Okay. So there is no problem here. Whereas here also I have taken samples. Okay, I have sampled. The samples are taken at these points. Okay. And uh, when I recover, when I try to recover the signal from the uh, samples, I got a signal like this. And uh, if I compare the recovered signal with the original signal, they do not match each other. Similarly, here in the second diagram also, I have taken samples at these points and when i try to recover the signal from these points the recovered signal do not match with the original signal analog signal and here also if the samples are taken at these points and when i try to recover the recover the signal from these samples they do not match each other at all there are a lot of differences between them okay so what makes this difference the thing is, the main thing is, here the sampling is not done at a higher rate. Due to this, the recovered signal is unable to match the original signal. So, what is the thing? The sampling is not taken, at a, the sampling is not done at a higher rate. So, what is the rate, what is the minimum rate to uh, uh, so that the sampling is done, so that the recovered signal resembles the original signal? So, we call it as Nyquist rate. Sampling should be the minimum rate required for the recovered signal for the sample uh, for the recovered signal from the sample signal to resemble the original signal is called as Nyquist state. What is the Nyquist state? So Nyquist state is twice the highest frequency component available in the original signal. Okay, so sampling should be done at a rate equal to or greater than the twice the highest frequency component of the original signal. Okay, so what is the uh, twice the highest frequency component? For example. Let us consider this signal. Okay, so here this is the signal. Okay, and when we uh, analyze this signal, this is the reference line. Okay, so the number of times this signal crossing the reference line in this portion is less than the number of times the signal is crossing the reference line in this portion. Okay, so in this portion 2 has highest frequency has higher frequency than the portion 1 okay so when we analyze this signal the signal has highest frequency highest frequency in the portion 2 okay so this highest frequency is calculated and this highest frequency is multiplied by 2 okay and uh, that gives the Nyquist state sampling should be done at this Nyka state okay in simple words the sample should be very closely spaced frequent sample should be taken okay so that is the thing okay so here the samples are very closely spaced very tightly packed okay and that is the reason they are they resemble they try to resemble the structure of original analog signal like this okay so sampling should be done at Nyquist state Nyquist state is the twice the highest frequency component available in the original analog signal if you sample at a rate greater than or equal to Nyquist state the recovered signal from the sample signal or discrete signal will resemble the original signal okay right now here we are we are not doing exactly at the Nyquist state we are doing the sample at a rate less than the Nyquist state so what happens aliasing occurs when we do like this okay so what is meant by aliasing here aliasing means 
uh, there are many ripples in the frequency domain of the recovered signal of the uh, sample signal discrete signal and the uh, replicas the replicas of of a signal of a sample overlap with the other frequency component other frequency component okay so here uh, i have converted all these uh, signals into frequency domain okay so here this one this portion represents the um, analog signal the original signal uh, in frequency domain okay so in frequency domain means here in x axis you can uh, see i have written f okay so that means frequency domain okay here in previous condition it was t it was t okay and uh, when i convert this analog signal into frequency domain represented in frequency domain uh, i am getting a signal like this okay and a discrete signal is that sample signal is that when this uh, discrete signal or sample signal is converted into frequency domain i got this kind of representation and here when sampling is not done at a rate higher than the nikus rate when it, when sampling is done at a rate lower than the nikus rate the frequency of a sample overlap with its replicas okay so here overlapping occurs okay the frequency is overlap with the replicas so what happens this is called as aliasing when we try to recover the signal this uh, occur due to aliasing the signal will not be perfect and uh, uh, due to that the that uh, distortion can be seen okay if sampling is done at a rate greater than the nikus rate there is no overlapping of the frequency component with nearby frequencies okay there is no overlapping so in order to avoid aliasing sampling should be done at a rate greater than or equal to nikus rate okay this is how we avoid nikus uh, sorry uh, aliasing okay so this is regarding aliasing now again there is a thing called as intersimple interference which is also defined as overlapping okay so what is the difference between intersimple interference and analyzing let us see okay so aliasing occurs due to undersampling right whereas intersimple interference occurs in communication channel okay in in the medium medium of transmission sampling occurs in the transmitter itself in the transmitter side whereas this intersimple interference occurs during transmission okay from transmitter to receiver in the medium it occurs okay so how it occurs let's let us see okay so here we are representing the digital signal 1011 in the form of pulse okay so these are pulse one represented like this zero it is represented by the by an absence of pulse here and one by the presence of a pulse okay so like this is it is represented when we transmit this pulse to the receiver in the medium what happens as the distance increase the pulse are broadened okay the bul the pulses are broadened and they overlap with the nearby pulse okay and here we are we are able to identify the individual signal from this pulse so here presence of pulse is there one and here overlapping is there in this portion okay but there is uh, no strong pulse present here so it is considered as zero and here pulse is present one one so here we are unable to identify the individual digital signal individual digital bits okay again if the distance increase further if the distance is increase further the the broadening of the pulse also increases okay and it may come like this Okay, what happens at this point? One is there, but we are unable to identify zero. Okay, unable to identify zero and um, one, one like this. One. Okay, so here also one. So this zero is considered as one. Okay, so what happens? There is a change in the signal that we are transmitting, and this occurs. This thing is called as intersimple interference. okay so intersimple interference occur in the transmitting medium not in the transmitter whereas uh, aliasing occurs in the transmitter okay so aliasing can be overcome by oversampling okay by oversampling aliasing occurs due to undersampling it can be overcome by oversampling the uh, analog signal 
whereas intersymbol interference occurs in the transmission medium as the distance between the transmitter and receiver increases the pulse broaden and they overlap with each other and cause intersymbol interference this intersymbol interference can be overcome by employing regenerative repeaters at regular interval of distance between the transmitter and receiver so this in, uh, this regenerative repeater they receive the broadened pulse reshape the pulse amplify the pulse and again they retransmit it to the channel to the medium okay so in this manner uh, these regenerative repeaters they avoid they uh, they are helpful in overcoming the ill effect of intersymbol interference so uh, as a conclusion intersymbol interference is pulse broadening in time domain whereas aliasing it is overlapping of the uh, frequency component of the samples okay uh, overlapping of the replicas of the frequency component of the samples that cause aliasing that occurs in frequency domain and aliasing occurs in transmitter whereas uh intersymbol interference occurs between transmitter and receiver in the channel occurs in the channel which is between the transmitter and receiver okay and we have discussed what are the ways by which aliasing can be overcome and what are the ways by which we can avoid this intersymbol interference so i hope you understand the difference between intersymbol interference and aliasing so um, this video may be very much helpful in understanding those differences thank you for watching watching this video kindly comment like share and don't forget to subscribe my channel knowledge academy meet you again in the next video thank you bye